Is the true church a denomination or a body of believers who are saved by Jesus? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Burrell. I appreciate you spending some time with us. And the last couple of times we got to meet Sam, and today, Katie Frederickson from Boise. Hello. Hi, Katie. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you Appreciate for having you me. Appreciate you making that trip. I know that's a long one. I've made it myself. And it's not too, bad. We, not too bad. we drive to Portland a few times a year, so this is shorter than that. So it wasn't too that's bad. That's for his family. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, it's nice to have you with us. Now, the interesting thing about Katie is that you have always been a Christian. It's true. It's I'm not the ex-Mormon files. I'm the <laughs> never-Mormon files. <laughs> so, but yeah. I think the interaction gives maybe some people a perspective. You had always planned on marrying a, mm -hmm. a Christian. Uh, Christian. Yep. And uh, God somehow just told Sam that uh, to, okay, get to get with the program. Yeah. You gotta get together. <laughs> so this yeah. is what we're going to do. And, yes. And he did his part. Mm -hmm. And we didn't talk timeline much with, uh, no. with Sam. So when was Sam's uh, little hospital experience with Jimmy? So that was about July of 2013. Okay. And then he converted shortly thereafter, late July, early August. And this is when he'd read the CES letter? No, he hadn't read that yet. He okay. just, that was just after Jimmy. When he started reading the Bible maybe? And, yep, okay. yep, reading the Bible, had that conversion, ex that born again experience. Okay. And then we started dating in October of 2013. Okay. And then we got engaged a year later. Okay. And then we got married in July of uh, 2015. 2015, okay. Yep. And then he read the C. He was, I mean, he was Christian that whole time. Yeah. Uh, but then he he didn't know the bad news yeah. until about January probably of 2018. Just a little over so a year just ago. recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go back on you. You're actually uh, from Boise, right? Yes. Born, I, born yeah. and raised? And yep. Everything? And so are my parents and my grandparents. And <laughs> yeah, really? which is becoming a rarity in Boise these days. That's There's a, pretty a lot area, of newcomers. Though, it's gorgeous. The, we love it there. The river through there. Yes. And, yeah. yeah. And decent winters. Right? Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. We had a, a snowpocalypse in 2018. Oh, you did? Uh-huh, yeah, it was it was really bad. We like had, most of us did. I oh, think. my gosh, yeah. It was like more snow than they'd yeah. seen since like the 70s. It was crazy. So what kind of Christian would we say? Um, well, really? so that's the thing. So like when you talk to Sam's LDS family, they're always like, well, what are you? I'm like, I'm a Christian. They're like, okay, but like, what are you? Yeah. I'm like, it's just a Christian. You're just a Christian. <laughs> but um, we... I attended a Baptist church growing up, uh, American Baptist church, yeah. and then now we attend a Nazarene church. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's what we kind of pose the question about the. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, is there a one church, run one true church? Right, you right. Know, and I've learned that there really is just a basic foundational. Uh, the basics, the mm -hmm. foundation, yeah. that's Jesus and grace and yeah. and not our own works and yes. and that holds true for all the. Uh, Christian denominations. I yes, I think so. And so. I, I tried to explain this to, I can't remember who, but one of Sam's family members recently where I was like, it's not like if you went to a Nazarene church and then you went to a Baptist church, you would have to like renounce the Baptist church to go right. to the Nazarene church. Because you carry Jesus with you. Yeah, right? and you wouldn't have to change. I mean, there's the things that you disagree on. Uh, a, my old pastor did a sermon on this once and he had a jar of water and a bunch of big rocks and some little rocks. And he put um, the little rocks in first and then the big rocks in second, and then he poured the water and the water overflowed. And the second time he put in the big rocks first and then he poured in the little rocks and the little rocks filled in the holes and he poured in the water and it all, and fit. It all fit. It all fit. And he said, this is, it's the same thing with Christianity. If there are big things we need to agree on, yeah. deity of Jesus, you know, things like that, the resurrection, grace, uh -huh. but little rocks like, I don't know, women pastors or, baptism, you know, any, any, yeah, baptism, communion, any of these things, they're little rocks and they're not the kind of things that's that really are going to, to keep you out of heaven. And yeah. so that's kind of my, what I always come back to when I think, well, they've got that wrong. I think, was well, this a big rock or is this a little rock? And most things are little One rocks. One thing that affected me a lot was, um, because we always talk about Mormons, always talk about. Uh, I keep saying we, sorry. That's fine. But Mormons always talk about uh, the restoration and mm -hmm. how important that was. 
And the scripture that really struck me when I was coming out was, where two or three are gathered in my name, there mm -hmm. am I also. Mm -hmm. And it just struck me that there's, there was no need for a restoration. Mm -hmm. We've always, there's always been two or three gathered. Mm -hmm. As we gather now, mm -hmm. Christ can be here, and, mm -hmm. and he's what's important. Yes, exactly. You know? And so I think as long as we're on the same page about Jesus, everything else is kind of kind of secondary. You know, he's the, yeah. it's all about Jesus. So now you're young, and you, yes. and you go to church, and, yep. and, and just so people know, and I won't toot your horn too much, but you've been on a couple of mission trips yep. to Honduras and Kenya. Yep, so in 2010, my youth group, which is like, um, it's like mutual, uh -huh. um, but for Christian kids, um, we went on a trip together to Kenya. My youth pastor's wife's parents are missionaries there, long-term missionaries. Oh. Um, so we went there and stayed with them. We were there for about two weeks, I think, and um, like built a church. Did and projects. Did, and yeah, stuff. just service projects and stuff. Spent a day volunteering at an orphanage, things like that. And I realize so. the mission trips are different, maybe between Mormons and, yes. and Christians. And yet, uh, one thing I didn't realize as a Mormon is that people have a heart for other people, you oh, know, yes. and they have youth programs and children's yes, programs. definitely. And, it never struck me, I guess, that Christians really Did care about their families. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, who yeah. knew? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, I, I remember when, so I brought Sam to youth group with me once when we were just friends That's in high school. Saying, yeah. yeah, and uh, his mom, he went home and he said, oh, I went to youth group with my friend Katie. And his mom said, well, when's she going to come to our church? Because <laughs> I think she kind of had this idea of like, well, whatever they're teaching can't really be that good, yeah. you know? So yeah, We've got more um, to share. Right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, but we, I mean, I did, I um, growing up, I went to Sunday school on Sundays. And um, when I was little, I did something called Awana, which is like, yeah. it, it's like scouting, but instead of doing like outdoor activities to earn badges, you memorize scripture. Um, so I did that for a long time growing up and was pretty involved and um, attended youth group on Wednesdays where, you know, you play games. It's like mutual. You play games and learn a lesson. You and also had a where you interacted and taught each other about Mormonism or someone would teach you about yes. Mormonism. Did you have guests come and talk? No. So talk I, don't, about? I would love to get my hands back on this curriculum now. Um, I should ask my old youth really pastor. Said. I'm sure he still has it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it, I had took this class in high school called Launchpad, and it's a Boise-based ministry. They have them in several states now, but it's like seminary, um, but it's for Christians. And in seminary, we did a unit on how to witness to your Mormon friends. And this is a big deal because growing up in Meridian, Idaho, everybody's LDS. Yeah. You know, it's very common. I'm, I had a lot of LDS friends. And so it was kind of a, a, a teaching tool about how yeah. I mean, and I remember how like, to to yeah, me. how to witness. Do you remember to them. anything specific that would? N uh, no, I remember they did like a myth busting session, um, where they like had people, because it's like a video curriculum, and so I remember like in the videos they talked about like, well, what are some things you've heard about Mormons, and then they would tell you like, is that true or is that not really true? Um, and a lot of the things that people had heard were like not true, but then they tried to like show some of the things that were true. So I learned about the bad news pretty early on from those kinds of videos, you know, about Joseph Smith and his polyandry. Yeah, polyandry and, um, you know, some of the, the Abraham, what is it, the book the of Abraham? Abraham? Yeah, I knew about that always. Yeah. And so when Sam left the Mormon church, he had never heard any of this stuff. <laughs> and so that would, I mean, we would, we would have, it was contention because I was like, well, this is obviously not true and like objectively you can just read about it and he was like don't read that stuff <laughs> no it's not true you know yeah i think so, that's what more mormons are told don't mm -hmm. read that stuff yeah because... even after he wasn't lds he still felt that very strongly that he needed to not look at that kind of information because it would i don't know do something i don't know <laughs> so so you invite him you you, you kids meet in middle school yeah. and you invite him to this youth group and yep. then he, he's going through some challenges in his life and, yes. and you, you yeah, still so care I, for him, but not necessarily as a boyfriend at this point, but no. just as someone you care about. Yes, definitely. We were just really good friends. We we both are people who just are really interested in religion. I'm pretty sure in high school people probably called me like a Bible thumper because I was a very, very religious young lady, different than most 16 year olds, um, yeah. had a very large affinity for Jesus in the Bible always. So. Um, I, you know, I bring him to youth group and I, I just really cared so deeply about him. Like I, I remember telling my mom once, 
mom, I just love Sam so different than I've ever loved anybody else. I just feel, feel a love for him that's different than the love I have for anyone else. And it wasn't like a romantic love. I just cared so much about him and that he would know Jesus and that he would love Jesus as his savior and friend. And I really think that was God just like planting seeds in my heart <laughs> saying like, this guy's going to be really Get special really. <laughs> to you. Yeah. For the rest of your life. Like he really wrote our love story. So, um, well, that's really special. Yeah. You're praying for him. And it sounds like mom was praying for yes. him too. So I was in a small group, which, um, I don't really know how to describe that, but it's like a group of couples usually who get together in a home once a week to meet and do a Bible study and you just kind of do life together. Well, I, in my senior year, I joined a, a small group and I was the youngest person there by like at least 40 years. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Everybody else was time. grandparents. Um, it's dear, dear people. They are all still so special to me. I mean, that was just a fabulous group. And I, every week they would say, okay, anybody have any prayer requests? And I would say, everybody pray for my friend, Sam. He's just going through a hard time and I just really want him to know Jesus. And so, I mean, on our wedding day, people from the small group were coming up. They came to yes. Me. And they're coming up to me saying, I remember praying for him every day for years. <laughs> I mean, he had a, like, talk about a cloud of witnesses. <laughs> like he had so many people on his team cheering for him and my mom as well. Sam had gone through like a really dark time when we were probably like sophomores or juniors in high school and he was just being really afflicted by a dark presence and I don't know if that was spiritual warfare or just he was mentally ill or a combination of the two but yeah. it was a very dark time and I had told my mom you know mom Sam, Sam's seeing this dark thing and it's afflicting him and you know it makes us sound a little woo woo but she just started but we're not really like that and she just started praying for him and started praying that he would meet an angel but i didn't know that until after he after met you, jimmy you know, and yeah and after i after i he told me about jimmy i went home and told my mom oh. and she said her jaw just dropped and she said <laughs> i've been praying for years that sam god would send sam an angel and i just think god was just doing something so much bigger than what we ever had in mind you know yeah. like he he was writing, a, you just talked about, he writes a better story every time. Yeah. Anytime I make the plans, these are stupid. And anytime God makes the plans, they're so much better than I could imagine. Well, I think it's so fascinating that Sam really came out of himself, it sounded like, and, and started witnessing to, to Jimmy and mm -hmm. really yeah. well, kind of confirmed in his own heart that there yes. was... Well, what's so funny is he, he mentioned he called me before he went into the hospital and said, hey, you know, I'm making terrible decisions, which we all knew. And, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I got to turn my life around and I'm going to go do this and I'm hoping to, to, you know, come out of it better. And we got off the phone. It was late at night. I was watching Craig Ferguson on late night TV and I turned off the TV and I got down on my knees and I prayed and I said, God, please let Sam hit rock bottom so that he has nowhere to turn except, except you. you. Yeah, and I really think God answered that prayer. So, <laughs> yeah, not a very kind prayer, but it worked out for him in but, the end. <laughs> you had been watching him suffer for Oh, yes, for oh, yes, and I just said, and, you know, and, and I've prayed that prayer for other friends now, too, you yeah. know, that, you know, Lord, help her hit rock bottom so that the only place she has left, the only person she has left to talk to and trust in and believe in is you, so... Well, now, I know, you shared with me earlier that you actually came to the Lord, you think, at age four. Yeah, what, yeah. What happened? Well, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I had been at Sunday school, and they had taught about how um, our hearts are dirty. And, I mean, talking to a child in childlike terms, our hearts are dirty, and the only person who can clean up your heart and make it clean forever is Jesus. And I wanted a clean heart so badly. And I, I don't think I fully understood like sure. grace and atonement sure. and all that, all those big words, Not at that age, but I did right. understand that there was something in me that wanted to do bad, that I could never stop doing bad as long as I lived, no matter how hard I tried, I would always have this mark of sin. And the only way I could be clean was if Jesus would come live in my heart. And I said, I want Jesus to come live in my heart. And so my mom, I remember it clearly. She put me on the kitchen table cause I was small <laughs> and she, we, we sat there and the light was streaming in through the window. And she, we sat there and we said, prayed a prayer and said, you know, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know my heart is dirty. I know that it can't be clean without you. And so, wow. I mean, obviously my faith grew through the sure. years and we had, a, I've had ups and downs, but I do feel that Jesus has been my very best friend who has walked through every season of life with me. I mean, I'm getting emotional just talking about it, but I feel that he has been there for me in every dark moment and every good moment and just mm -hmm. has been this faithful friend who, That's if so I hadn't special. known him at four, I don't know if we would have had that relationship, but he's been there yeah. through everything. 
Oh, that's so sweet. That, there's so much we, we're going to cover here, I, get, I hope we get yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. One thing that I did want to, and I'm just looking at my notes, but you'd, you'd uh, mentioned that, and I don't want to be too negative about this, but when you had learned what you did about Joseph Smith mm -hmm. and Book of Mormon, Book of Abraham and all that, and then you go into the to Sam's family. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know any of it. And, they and that was very that, surprising to me. I thought... So he's been a bishop. Yes. Dad, and yeah. she's been active. They're oh, temple yes. workers and yes. everything. And, it's well, surprising, isn't it? Yeah, I remember specifically, we had not been dating that long, and we got in the car to go somewhere, and I got in the back seat of Sam's dad's truck, and in the back seat there was a book, a biography like many LDS have, about Joseph Smith, and I picked it up to look at it, and I thought, hmm, this is interesting, I'm sure, th how do they justify all these things Joseph Smith did with the person he was, and I flipped through it a little, I read the back cover, yeah, and they're talking him. about him as a martyr and a hero, and I was like, he wasn't martyred. He was run out of town. You know what I mean? Like, and I was like, how? it was just really strange to me. So I remember asking Sam. A gun well, battle. Yeah. I asked Sam, well, what, how do they, do they just not talk about that part? Do they just not believe it's true? And he's like, no, they don't, they've never even heard that. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> that was so strange to me. Cause I, I mean, these were just things I knew, you yeah. know? And then, um, I read Unveiling Grace. Mm -hmm. about yeah. two years ago, Lynn, Lynn, Wilder's, Lynn Wilder's book. book. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, that book gave me hope. I mean, for my, fa our family and, you know, but it also just really opened my eyes to some of the, but they won't read it. No. Won't oh no. I haven't yeah. even asked. Um, I'm sure if they saw the picture of the temple upside down on the front, they'd be like, get that away from me. But I mean, just reading it gave me better perspective on like what my family feels yeah. rather than the way I perceive it, it gave yeah. me insight into that culture. So that, that you culture. don't judge them as Yes, harshly, it, it, it made know. me totally understand where they're coming from yeah. so much more. Well, our knowledge in, we, Mormons' knowledge is very thin, mm -hmm. very shallow, and and we are happy there. Mormons mm -hmm. are happy in that shallow, and they don't want to deep, dig deeper. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, and not really much else can grow out of that either. Mm -hmm. You just kind of have you a blind You talk about the seed, you know, where's faith. the soil falling, yeah. yeah. So the CES letter comes in. Now you must, at 2013, you, Sam's kind of come to, to Jesus at this point, and now he hasn't resigned from the church no. or anything, mm -mm. but you get married in 2015. Yes. Was this a thrilling time for you to see him make a transformation? <laughs> yes, I mean, oh my gosh. I just think, I mean, my dad, because at first when we first started dating, I was at school away in Chicago. I was attending a Christian college there. And my dad like discipled Sam and like invited him and our good buddy Ian. Sam mentioned him yeah. too. Ian's been there through it all. And uh, they would come over and Ian and my dad would do a Bible study with Sam and just disciple him. And, and so it was an exciting time for my whole family. And I think we all knew pretty much from like the minute we started dating, like these two are going to get married because it was just, I mean, God just wrote this amazing love story for us. And yeah. so, um, so yeah, that was definitely... I don't That's know where exciting. I'm going with this, but yeah. Well, no, but but just to to, to see his transformation. Yes, and to it was come a it was Jesus. a very exciting time, and I mean, Sam mentioned how we would spend the evenings um, playing piano and singing and with hymns studying. and studying the Bible as a group. I mean, there was about five of us, all of whom are still close to us to this day, and it was just very. I mean, like you, I'm reading right now in my personal time through the Book of Acts, and I'm when I'm reading about the church growing and all of these people believing. I mean, that's what it was like. It was like an ax church in Sam's basement. You know, it was just like that. Well, it was thrilling for Carla and me to go through, um, Carla and I, no, Carla, to, to, for me to go through the Bible, read these scriptures that I'd never read before. Yes, and see carried them come that, alive. Carried that Bible for six centuries or six decades. Never once really understanding what I was reading until my eyes opened. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden these scriptures are there and they're just fantastic. I know, I know. Yeah. So last year I did a Bible read through where I read the whole Bible in a year. And about <laughs> about like April of last year, I was like, I should just start writing down. Because it felt like every day I was finding a scripture that refuted Mormonism. Every day. I mean, if you look for them, they're just on every page. So right. I was like, I'll just write these down. <laughs> so right. I have this huge list of all of these verses that talk about, I mean, everything under the sun. Yeah. Eternal marriage and baptism yeah. for the dead. and I mean, everything. Yeah. And just that show that. But I mean, it doesn't work if the Bible doesn't have authority. Right. But if you really believe that the Bible is the authority, or even that the Bible has authority at all, 
it's um, incompatible with the teachings yeah. of Mormonism, yeah, especially with the you know the doctrine and covenants, where so much of the theology comes from. Right. It's incompatible. Yeah. So, so tell us then about how the CES letter comes about in, yeah. from your perspective. Yeah. And, well, Sam, one day it used to be that he had a hard time falling asleep at night, and I I and fall this asleep. Married. Where, yeah, we've been married for a couple of years at this point, and. Um, so he would stay up and read after I went to bed. So he would lay in bed with me, but he would read on his iPad. And so one morning I wake up and he's been awake like all night reading anti-Mormon literature. And I, he's telling me all this stuff. And I'm like, where did you learn all this? He's like, well, I just came across this thing. It's called the CES letter. Like you have to read it. And of course, like none of this was like really, I mean, some of it was new, but especially the stuff about, I, he was particularly disturbed by like the book of Abraham, you yeah, know, yeah. and, um, and that things like that, the polyandry and, I'm trying to think of other issues that are masonry, brought up. Yes, the, the masonry. Temple. Yeah, that was interesting because I always knew the temple ceremony was a Masonic ritual, you know. And Boy, I didn't. Yeah, I know some people don't. And that was so, so surprising to me that, yeah. you know, but anyway, so we, he, he just starts talking about all of this and, and yeah. And so then he, he, he goes deeper. He does kind of a deep dive on Mormonism and starts learning about the bad news. So he's already a Christian at this point. He has full faith in Jesus, but he's starting to understand that, um, you know, Mormonism is not just misguided, it's actively teaching falsehoods, you yeah. know, and there are people, and not that every person in Mormonism knows this, because I think most don't, and not that even every leader knows this, but people have known that this is not right. true. I mean, yeah. if you read the church essays, yeah. they know. The head and the head. Yes, they that know that it's not true. And yeah. so, I mean, that's church-sponsored literature, right. you know, so... um his faith kind of started, for, not only did it make his faith in Mormonism dwindle, but it also made his faith in Jesus just come alive. Because I'm I think sure. he realized that he has something so much better. Jesus is just better than everything, <laughs> you know. And um, so last summer I was reading, and I think it's First Kings, and it's a, maybe it's Second Kings, I don't know. And it's the story where Solomon has all of his wives, and he believes in the God of the Israelites, but his wives believe in all these foreign gods, the balls. Oh, yeah. And um, Solomon doesn't tear down the high places. Yeah. And it says that God saw that he did that and saw that it was evil in the sight of the Lord. And it just struck me that, you know, Sam was still a member of the Mormon church and Sam didn't believe in the Mormon church, but he was staying in the Mormon church to, because it was the easy thing to do For, formally, formally family. on the records because of yeah. his family and stuff like that. And so I told him, you have to tear down the high places. And he was like, I don't know if I want to do that. And so I was on vacation in Italy with my grandmother and we were FaceTiming and he said, I sent in my resignation today. And he and his brother did it oh. together and formally resigned from the church. And yeah. um, I wrote in my Bible that on that day. Yeah, I yeah. wrote the day on my Bible, just, you know, tear down those high places because, you know, doing nothing and being passive in God's eyes is the same as actively being involved. There are no other gods but him. And this God of Mormonism is not the God of the Bible. Yeah. So, Yeah, it's. I think one of the things that Jesus didn't like was hypocrites. Yes, you know, yeah. Just believing one thing or knowing something and then not, yes. not acting on it. Or yes. It. Well, gosh, uh, let's Time see. Kind of by. <laughs> I know. Um, well, one thing I was impressed with is, is some of the activities that you've done. You mentioned teaching Sunday school, but you also yep. have done a food and coat. Yeah, I started this like food and coat drive at my youth group when I was like 15, and we did it for a few years. I don't yeah. know if they still do it now, but yeah. I did that. I volunteered at the food bank, um, coordinating the volunteers. My, yeah. uh, my church had a food bank that they ran out of the church. Yeah. Um, I've taught Sunday school for ages, <laughs> uh, every level imaginable. Yeah. I'm not particularly gifted with children, but I always end up back in the children's ministry. <laughs> So I guess well, it's just where yeah. God wants me. You're young and yes, cute it's and true. So, kids, um, so yes, yeah, so I'm I'm doing that now. I teach fourth grade, yeah. and I've been on, like I said, I've been on a missions trip. So I've been to Kenya, and then in 2013, 2014, I went to Honduras with Compassion International, mm. which is a child sponsorship organization that yeah. helps connect children in developing nations with sponsors here in America or other first world countries. And oh. um, you build a personal relationship with that child and your money pays for their schooling, food, medical care, all that stuff. So, so I'm really involved with compassion too. I speak at churches about them regularly. And wow. mm -hmm. yeah, I'm trying to think of what else. I don't know. I'm, I always have my hand in like 50 different. <laughs> I always, I'm, I'm a busy bee. <laughs> well, so uh, your family has been excited of course of Sam's yes. transition have you been able to 
how's Sam's family? With so that's living? a question I get all the time. Anytime I talk to a Christian and I say, oh, Sam's, I mentioned Sam's family is, is Mormon. Everyone is so fascinated. They're like, well, what do they think about you? What do they think about Sam? And you know, you hear horror stories about people who leave the church and their sure. families shun them forever. And that's so sad. And Sam's family has not been like that. Even his extended sounds family. Like, sounds like they've been, they have been very so loving. loving and accepting. They yeah. do believe that we will one day Come back. To Come them. back, and that I mean, she, his mother's told me, you know, we hope that someday you'll be married in the temple, and but they've got to be happy with the cha I think, changes yes, in yes, Sam. Yes, I think they're, and I think at the beginning they were mostly just so happy that he wasn't <laughs> um, living this lifestyle Challenge, anymore yeah. that it didn't matter. But as time has gone on, there's definitely a rising tension between um, what we believe and the realization that at some point we're going to have to really talk about it because it's not just that we aren't Mormons, it's that we actively believe that Mormonism is false. And I think at this point, his family just kind of thinks that we just haven't mm. thought about it, we just haven't looked into it. Yeah. But it's the opposite is true, so. And maybe this will help bridge that if they're yeah. willing to look. We and, hope, and yeah, we hope. At, at least at least try to understand your perspective mm -hmm. and where you've been coming from. Mm -hmm. And You know, it, it seems like it ought to be easy. I know a lot of people when I say that, easy about carrying Jesus with you, but I know a lot of people that leave the Mormon church mm -hmm. become agnostic or atheist. Mm -hmm. Like as Sam's brother has, you know. And, so. and, and it's so sad because mm -hmm. you'd think that they'd be able to take Jesus mm -hmm. with them, but I don't think, and you were mentioning this, or we talked about it maybe a little bit, what, um, how they kind of idolize Joseph Smith, or mm -hmm. I realize they don't think he's a god. I mean, well, that's another Yeah, but he's standing there helping you theology. get into heaven, yeah. so <laughs> he's other something. Other theology involved yeah. there, but they have this great respect for him and mm -hmm. the prophets, and uh, and not, not, well, I mean, I know they love Jesus, but it's just But different. Jesus is secondary, yeah. you know, Jesus is not... Jesus well, is everything, you yeah. know, and like we talk about the difference between the cross, you know, right. and how the cross is. Well, you wouldn't, if your brother was killed with a gun, you wouldn't yeah. wear a gun around your neck. Well, the cross is the crux of all of human history. Without the cross, we have nothing. We yeah. just have nothing without, and yes, the resurrection too, but that's... Well, the big the difference is, is really is. how we're saved. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're, in Mormonism, you save yourself, basically. Yes, yes. You, you do your own work, and Jesus kind of picks up the the pieces mm -hmm. in Christianity, Je Jesus saves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not about us yeah. because we're sinners. But Well, Katie, our time's gone really quickly. That Anything so you'd fast. like to say to, to your family, Sam's family, the Mormons out there? Yeah, I mean, I think Sam said it so well at the end of his interview, just talking about how it is all about Jesus. But I also would just really encourage, I mean, when I read Unveiling Grace and it, Michael Wilder talks about just read the New Testament like a child yeah. that to me is so crucial just if you really sit down and read God's word and pray about it and say Lord show me the way I mean you knock the door will be open to you you will receive your answer and your answer is that Jesus is everything and so my encouragement is Michael Wilder's words just read the New Testament like a child and yeah. if you read it like a child Christ will come alive to you in a way that he never can yeah. without without his word. Yeah, so. I second that too. Yeah. <laughs> Katie, thanks for coming all the way from Boise. And yeah, it's so great. It and I wish you the best in, in the rest of your life. Awesome. So, Thank you so much, Earl. Yeah, thank you. And we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.